A lot of y'all asked, how can you help support the Backyard Gardens podcast? Well, we have been busy and we have created a t-shirt line just for the gardener. To visit our shop, go to the link in the show notes and check out the t-shirts and other goodies we have. Now, these are super special t-shirts designed just for the gardener. So enjoy. Thank you for supporting the Backyard Gardens podcast. And we'll see you guys after the harvest. Ho, ho, ho is not a saying. It is not a phrase. It is a laugh. Santa George. Right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast, we're talking all things Christmas and specifically Christmas gifts for the gardener. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, as we learn to grow and grow for change. Can you believe it's time? No, I cannot believe it's time. Damn, that's some dead air right there. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> there's this. I get this um, call continually for a Wendy, and I always ignore it. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, I think I should tell them that I'm not Wendy, and maybe they'll yeah. stop calling. But then again, and maybe all so, a part of the master plan. Damn right. <laughs> so <clears throat> last year, I came on here and I announced that the uh, Santa documentary I had done was out on Amazon, this, that, and the other. Well, they had like a policy change, basically. And um, they took down all of their uh, independent documentaries. So I'm going to put the Santa documentary up on YouTube for you guys to check out at Backyard Gardens TV. Go ahead, Batavia. I see you hovering. (laughs) I was just ready to hit the bell. I know you were. And um, I think, you know, it's just I want that project to go out. I want it to be out in the world. So, you know, you guys enjoy it. It should be there. Um, yeah, so enjoy it and Merry Christmas ahead of time. But we need to get into talking about what the things that Santa brings are because <laughs> I want to know what is on top of your Christmas list or somebody else's Christmas list. That's a gardener. So remember the time. Well, this is my story. There is a time where it was all about the gifts and the gifts of like kind of what you need versus what you want. Yeah, that coffee's uh, hot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there were times where pajamas and socks and robes and things were a thing that I like got often mm-hmm. growing up. And then it was like we got to the point where um, and that that wrong number is Amanda. That's who they keep on calling for. And I'm not Amanda. Um, it's not an alias either. But anywho, then we transition into like kind of friends exchanging gifts and friends did a better job at getting things that you like, you know, significant others like you you move into that space. Yeah. And then somehow I ended right back up to like just exchanging gift cards. You know, so, which is kind of boring. I mean, useful, but kind of boring. Um, so now it's less about Christmas for me and more about birthdays. So I'm actually looking forward to like walking through for all those people that know me personally that are listening, what good gifts there would be for the gardener. Why did you look at me like that for? Oh, I wasn't even you, you buddy. You sh- your eyes basically said hint, hint, nudge, nudge no. when you looked right at me. You peered right through my soul on that one. That was tough. Uh, here we are. No, I um, I think I'm with you. Uh, gift cards are kind of lame, but at the same time, I kind of like them because then I can apply things and get like something really big or something that I mm-hmm. wanted. So... Um, so my neighbor across the street, which is probably telling too much. So one of my neighbors, pretend like you didn't hear across the street. Um, and I think I've mentioned before, like, um, I don't remember who I talked to about what anymore. It's 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 the end of the year. My mind is winding down. Um, but anywho, I, um, they'll call or text me like if they're away, like, hey, can you pick up this package that was on the porch? Right. So I'll pick them up. And um, a recent package I picked up was so heavy. Right. And so when. Um, she realized, did I already tell the story? Yeah. 
Well, so when she realized, well, I'm going to make it connect, right? <laughs> and she was waving me down. Like, so at, when she realized her husband came over to get the packages and she realized how heavy one of them was, she sent me a note like, oh, when's your birthday? You know, and so my birthday is the same day as one of her daughters. So it's like, well, can't do anything on that day for you. So it's like, oh, well, you know, it's send me a list of all of your favorite stores, you know, like, and I'm certain she's going to, you know get me a gift card so i'm like am i rude to say home depot and lowe's and like, menards. <laughs> like yeah i, I figured you doing. would say menards home depot lowe's mm-hmm. and um those are the only three that i know off the top of my head because you always go there yeah i'll wait until she asks a second time for yeah. the list and then i'll just unload like yeah <laughs> zales um <laughs> all the jewelry stores you know whatever <laughs> So I'm practical, man. Give me one to our local grocery store. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. But specifically, if you were a gardener, because I know how you aspire to be a gardener, Batavia, mm-hmm. you know, me, me and you, we're not future. really gardeners. We're yeah. like in the metaverse of gardening. If you I know, had three wishes, one of them would be for me to be a gardener and one of them would be for you to be a gardener. And what about the third one? A quadrillion dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But what would be at the top of your list of something that you would either want to receive or give another gardener? Um, The top of my list is a really nice harvest basket. So I know it. I know what it sounds like. I have I'm very much a ends and odds kind of gal. Um, And I found two pretty nice um, baskets at Goodwill earlier this year. Um, But in all of the cases of like the boxes and the Dollar Tree stuff that I have, it's like one of many, right? You know, so I'm always kind of piecing things together and Mm -hmm. a really nice sizable one would be helpful because it's kind of like, I know where that one thing is. I'm only using it for this one thing, you know, versus during the off season, this plastic container is also used for storage. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things that I've not broken down and like purchased for myself because it just feels like, you know, you can always find one that's a little bit more reasonably priced. So I wouldn't even want it or need it to be new. You know, it could definitely be um, second hand or third hand or however many hands. But that's something that I haven't gotten for myself that I would really enjoy as a gardener. And what's your address? Just for so everybody knows. So in case everyone wants to send you well, one. You can actually <laughs> just send me the tracking number at seven 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 ninety three eleven. No, I mean for me, um I you know, I'm kind of embarrassed. That didn't even pop into my head. Mm-hmm. But I'm with you. I think that would be a solid gift. Mm-hmm. You know, um you know, something for me honestly would be especially so here's my problem with Christmas time. Christmas falls in the winter, mm-hmm. and I always get stuff for summer. Oh, yeah. So I'm always having all this stuff like sit around, you know, and I'm cool with it. Like I'm used to it, but at the same time, it, like it'd be really nice. Like, like I'm just about to start seeds for next year already. Can you believe mm-hmm. it? What about like a nice grow light or something? You know, something that I could use right away and really yeah. get that benefit of. Yeah, so um, really good point. I was envisioning holding my seeds in my new basket, but I'll move on. You gotta on. hold those in the dirt, man, so they grow. What you talking about? <laughs> seed packets, seed packets. Um, so I w- I'm looking at my setup downstairs, and I wonder if someone had gifted me a grow light, if it would have, when did I start growing seeds indoors? 20. 20- 20 was the first year indoors. So if someone would have gifted me, you know, uh, Christmas of 2018, a grow light, I wonder if I would have got off my butt sooner. I say that to say like, it's definitely an inspirational or for someone that is aspiring to do a certain thing. Like, I wonder if that's the nudge someone needs. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, well, I don't know. Cause then it's kind of rude to get somebody a gift like that be like, well, you need this. So why don't you go ahead and open it and now, now get started on that project, you know? I yeah, think, no, I'm gonna I've, go. I've with gotten actually, gifts like that before. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm gonna go with um, it being the thing that that person. Well, let's just say this: we, I would only buy this for someone that's like, oh, I want to do this thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I'll leave it at that. I do know though, 
I mean, you've known people like this over the years. How many people, and I'm sure their listeners are in this exact same seat. They've talked to someone about starting a garden. They've talked to someone about expanding their garden and they look up and the year is gone. Right. You know, and I think in that instance, it could be, you know, I guess it's how you receive the gift a positive. Like, oh, thanks. Right. I'm going to get started on this or like the pressure of. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to get started. But my grandmother once told me, and this wasn't about Christmas gifts, but it was just about in giving in general, you know, it's your job to give. It's not your job or place to, you know, look to see what someone's going to do with it. So. Oh, I used to get gifts from a certain somebody that I was very close to in my life that would give me a gift and then tell me exactly how to use it. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> but, you know, my whole thing is, yeah, you might you might get a, a grow light, but I guess what I'm kind of referring to is something. Something that as a gardener, you may not think to ask for, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times I know in my family, like I've, I've definitely in the older I get, I transition more into um, practical gifts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than, you know, fun. I like fun gifts, too, but I like the more practicality of it. So um, and the thing is, too, that's crazy is you don't really need some like super crazy multi hundred dollar um, light system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so and it's just like with your basket like you'd be happy with a three you know three time used basket that Mm -hmm. was you know dedicated for that absolutely so something that even maybe had a story would be pretty nice you know everything has a story you just get it and you make up your own story okay well yeah so i mean one of the presidents used to use my basket that's what i tell david (laughs) so he doesn't even know what a president is really yet, so that's uh, a different story. Sometimes I forget how little little people know and yeah. like kind of the stages they learn things. What what else can you uh can you would you give or receive as a you know, a gift for a gardener? Although it's counter to some of our recent dialogue. <sighs> uh huh. I think <laughs> I think a five pack of grow bags would be a really nice gift for someone that's expressed some desire to grow in containers, right? Sure. Um, It's reasonably priced. Um, I think that there is very little guilt if that sits in your garage or shed for a season and you come back around to it. Um, I think that they can decide if they're going to use one or all of them in that container. I think it's a really great even re-gift, you know, so you get five of them in most cases. You can gift one of the five, you know, so um, my asterisk is I am still on the fence about fully like, you know, they say, say it with your chest, fully endorsing the grow bag, um, but I will continue to grow in them. So take that for what it's worth. Um, So, yeah, I think that that's a, a medium you can grow in. Right. And I think it's neutral enough. I was thinking about there's some really beautiful, like more decorative um, pots that I've, I look at every year in the store and mm-hmm. I can't bring myself to buy them because of the expense. And I'm like, Oh, that'd be killer. You know, like I'd love to get that as a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe something that's a little bit more practical. And that's the reason why I bring up grow bags or go somewhere and get free buckets and give them those. I'm kind of joking a, about that. Yeah. But you know what though? I think most gardeners would be happy with that, which I think is so cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. One of the most common questions we get asked is, what do we use in our gardens as far as products? Well, we have an Amazon list below that if you go to, you can see all of the products that we use and like and recommend and you can buy them. And if you do, you support the podcast at no extra cost to you. So check out the link below for our Amazon store and help support the podcast and enjoy your gardens. Well, I, for the third year in a row, have gotten free leaves as what I'm going to deem a early Christmas present. And I mean, I what is the saying? (laughs) I couldn't be happier in a pig and slop, boy. <laughs> so I was um, on Facebook yesterday. It's the first time in probably six months I was on Facebook. 
and I happened to come across a post by Young Batavia, oh. and it says, I'm going out to collect leaves in people's yards. If you use fertilizers or chemicals, I can't take them, but let me know. I am picky. This beggar is a chooser. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect paraphrase. And the first year I posted it, because it was one of those memories, the first year I posted it, the same woman that I collected leaves from three years in a row responded like, oh, hey, do you still need leaves? She responded again this year. So I went and picked up the leaves. Her lawn person had put them in the bags. And by the time I got there, there were more leaves. So I collected like two more bags. And then her neighbor's house had like leaves everywhere. So I was like, you think they mind? And so she's like, I'll ask. And the mom was coming in with like two younger kids. And she's like, they're going to do it. And you could tell this was like, this is your chore and you're going to do it. She's like, but you can have them. And so <laughs> I went and dropped off my first load and came back and, and picked up the next load. And I'm telling you, and in between, believe this or not, it actually happened in between the first pickup and the second pickup, a neighbor down the street from me was collecting leaves. And I rolled down the window like, Hey, sweet thing. <laughs> okay, surprise I didn't me. say that part. I didn't say that part. I was thinking it though. Um, and so anyway, I collected those. But so I'm kind of joking about that as a Christmas gift. But this is a gift that is definitely um, more of the kind of from your heart versus from your pocketbook. And you only can offer this as a gift if you really are intending on coming through on it. Yeah. A gift of donating your time. Right. So, you know how when you were really little and you really didn't have money as a kid and you do like, you know, I don't know, maybe I'd wash dishes for an extra week or something like that. Um, at the beginning of the season for me, it's now the beginning of spring, it's stressful. There's a lot of work to be done. I mean, I'd love to have someone that dedicated a Saturday, you know, in April or something. You know, I'm going to tell you this. Um, I remember that when I was a little kid, and I remember that as of yesterday. Same thing. <laughs> I need to get a little extra money. What can I do? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, and I actually, while you were speaking of your leaves, I had a thought. And I believe I said this last year, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it more focused this year. Um, I would like to have, like, a grab basket of stuff to... Mm-hmm. to to maintain my garden for the year. So what I'm saying is a basket with fish fertilizer, 10, 10, 10 fertilizer, you know, maybe some neem oil in it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some alfalfa meal because I'm vegetarian and I don't support factory farming and, um, maybe a pair of work gloves or something, you know, pack of seeds, something like that. Because what I find is, especially this time of year, like I'll go ahead and I'll stock up on all my fertilizer and stuff. And then I'm mm-hmm. good for the most of the summer. Like I don't have to run to the store and get it or anything. And if somebody gives you that for Christmas, like that's a really big help. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot of strain taken off of you during the growing season. So one of my, um, one of my friend circles all of our birthdays are november december so back to back to back right and um the second so first birthday is already passed the second birthday is coming up as of this episode my birthday would have been yesterday right you know so we're talking about the middle friend's birthday now and it's like oh what do you think we should get her and she has been putting up christmas stuff since like labor day like Mm. like i'm not like maybe not labor day but early october for sure and we were like well it makes sense get her something that's for christmas like christmas thing she can never have enough of that but then i'm like you know what she could she might be pretty particular about the kind of like the ornaments and like the color scheme and all of that i'm like you know what that's her thing let her do it we're not going to step into that world and there is a period of time where i thought that was the case for gardening like you really i mean you know you may go and buy seeds from a particular place so you just don't want seeds from any place right but i think your basket idea is a really good one because it's general enough like over the course of the season you'll need those things and can use those things and it doesn't mean you only have to use those things right you still Mm -hmm. have the freedom to decide and buy other things within your garden um that definitely comes from a more experienced gardener though don't you think like from one like if i'm the gift the giver i probably know a little bit more 
all all it takes we just is listening a, to you. All it takes is a significant other to see what you are constantly buying or using or have mm-hmm. in your garden shed or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, that would be a perfect. Like, if 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 my lovely wife would go do that for me, I would be so happy because it would just. You know what I mean? It just me. And first of all, it shows that you're paying attention to them. Mm-hmm. You care about what they're doing, and then you're helping them out through the year. So, and mm-hmm. like I said, I'm a practical kind of guy. So, what can I say? So go around like the shed and shake all of the jars to figure out like the you know the bottles to see what's almost empty and yeah. buy replacements of those. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, you could get. A, I mean, you could go crazy with it too. I know a, a guy, totally not garden related, but. Um, it was right after Christmas and they said, you know, what did you get for Christmas? And he was like, oh, my wife got me this pouch. I said, okay, that's cool. And inside that pouch was like 15 different kinds of glues that she had bought. Apparently the guy was like a glue connoisseur. I mean, his face <laughs> lit up. You would have thought he won the damn lottery. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I got this glue and it's good for this and that. And he started talking about glue. And I mean, I instantly glazed everyone's like, all right, we're talking about glue now. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the fact, and you could see how much it meant to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was pretty important. Yeah, there are people that I, this is going to, it's going to initially sound selfish. There are people that, you know, I'm like, oh, come by. You can get some things from the garden. I would not personally be offended if you gave me a couple of packages of seeds of things that you may be interested in growing. Remember my neighbor, a couple of doors down, we were trying to grow zucchini together and Mm -hmm. squash. Um, Mm -hmm. And so like this idea when he was, we got close to it. He's like, Oh, where should I go buy the seeds? I'm like, Oh, I have seeds here. But you know, there is this idea of, Hey, I want to grow this California reaper pepper or whatever. Like, right if this person has talked about that with you, you know, kind of sharing some garden space, which is actually a really good, again, non-monetary gift. Um, here's a garden, half of a garden bed that I'm willing to dedicate to you. I know. I mean, I, I get, I know where I'm headed and where you're headed and there are two different places, but I still think these are really great gestures in the form of a gift. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I don't see any problem with it. Okay. Good. No. We've we've gone pretty practical on this one. Let's uh let's take a step away from practical. Let's switch it up. What would you like something, you know, what do you think is something that would be really good as like a non-practical gift, uh something wild? I don't want to say this and be rude because you receive this as a gift, but greenhouse baby. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's for the person that has the the land to be able to kind of erect it right like it wouldn't be the best gift for me just because of my compact space but gosh that's 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 huge man yeah like a Uh, gift uh, certificate or something for one of those like like one of those like old victorian ones that's like Mm -hmm. solid glass like heated and everything oh my gosh could you imagine warm inside that would be the best present ever (laughs) but even then go ahead i was just gonna say there's so many things that i just struggle with buying for myself you know and it's like sometimes you i told you the story about the speaker uh, mm-hmm. I'm outside working and most time my, my cell phone is officially damaged because I drop it so much because I carry it on me and I received a box one day I'm like confused and the box has like this outdoor indoor speaker and I'm like this is the best thing since sliced bread I would have never bought it for myself I had received the links like I had asked oh suggestions and then my cousin sent me the links and I'm like oh, okay you know I kept on moving you know, you know how I am about getting links and everything I want them but then I can never still make the decision and it's like the best gift ever for me again that one wasn't you know it wasn't some large fee it was just uh, maybe like a hundred <laughs> bucks or something um, but still something I hadn't done myself but I, he knew that I would enjoy it so here yeah. we are and I mean, it's something that gets you through. I mean, just, can we talk about music in the garden real quick? Yeah, because that's where I use the speaker at. Yeah, where else are you going to use it? What else mm. are you doing outside? Mm-mm. That's no other reason a, to be outside. And, and plus, I mean, as we've discussed on one of the minisodes recently, 
it definitely helps with growing your plants. Mm-hmm. It 100% makes them grow faster and stronger. <laughs> so you will quadruple your harvest in half the time if you listen to plants. Or, or go back and listen while you're to in the that. Garden. Listen to that episode to determine what we really recommend. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to everything I say. Just part of that was true, maybe. <clears throat> I can't think of anything off the top. You know what? I, I take that back. I would like to have another shot at overalls. It's not very practical, but I'd like to have another shot at overalls. That's, you remember my story about my overalls. Uh-huh. One of so, my favorite um, stories. Yeah. So, in case you're new to the show, which if you are, thank you for being here. I was um, blessed with a pair of overalls at one point in my life, and I cut them into shorts because in North Carolina, where I live, it gets mega hot. Mm -hmm. Well, as time went on and you cut things that are denim, (laughs) they rise and certain things happened when I did things that was very uncomfortable and made other people uncomfortable. So there was that. (laughs) So, yeah, I would like to have another shot at overalls, though. I so. would, too, but I need to I need to buy them like I need to try them on at a store. I need to make sure, that, you know, it's comfortable around my parts and all. So that's not something I don't ever order online. All yeah. right. So I'm going to move back to practical. And I think that and this is going to be on every list that I provide um, a good starting a garden, expanding a garden, a good garden book. Yes. Um, I think that, I mean, so many people that I know, although I know them through like online experiences, these are the same people that have a book that they're putting up in a picture or they're referencing. And I so appreciate that we're still in that space. Um, And something about gardening in particular, like I really like the flip of the pages. Yeah. So first of all, um, we do have books that we recommend in our Amazon list. The link is in the description mm-hmm. and or description show notes, whatever you want to call it for this platform. I don't, I get confused, but um, there are many, as many a times that I prefer getting my knowledge from a book mm-hmm. because it seems like it's more solid and into, you know, information and it's something that's tangible that I can continuously go back to the exact same thing Mm-hmm. Every time, and I can take it out there with me. I can do it, you know, it's just something about it. I agree with you completely. It yeah. just it makes sense, especially when I have downtime. And this is such a great for people that have true winters, and then all of the rest of y'all that just kind of get like a cold, a cool spell, but kind of the downtime in the garden when you're thinking about planning and all. This is what I'm going back and paging back through some of the books that I've you know read before. Yeah. Um, I think that it really kind of helps reset and put your mind in that space. And I mean, people are spending all kinds of time preparing this information. Why search it out again, right? You know, like sure you can find a bunch of stuff on the internet, but we're talking about trusted sources, right? So these books are books that we have, you know, and that we refer to that's on this Amazon list, you know, season after season after season. Yeah, and a lot of the things that you hear us talk about Honestly, mm-hmm. a lot of it came from these books originally, and then we expanded with yeah. experience over time. But a lot of them kind of built that knowledge. Now, you can get into the weeds with books, too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you know, you could get a whole library going on, but you know, find you a couple books, something that people recommend, like the ones we recommend or somebody else you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, go from there. Like, there's one... Um, that I found that was growing vegetables in... North Carolina is a whole book, a mm-hmm. thick ass book mm-hmm. about vegetables with plant profiles about growing them in North Carolina. And um, that was, I was I just Googled it and found it and bought it. And, it's, mm-hmm. you know, most of the information was fairly accurate. Um, the difference, the problem with my state is we go from zones. I think it was zone five to zone eight. Mm-hmm. So it's hammering down where you are in that spectrum. You know what I mean? That's actually a really good note um, for people that are relocating. Did you remember if you bought that when you guys first moved there or? No, I bought it last year, Mm -hmm, I think. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I had gotten a gift card for Christmas. Yeah. And I was just running out of things to buy on Amazon or something. And <laughs> I typed it in and I said, growing vegetables in North Carolina, boom, book popped up, got it. And I, and I actually, I read it a lot. Yeah. So it's good. I like to have those references around so I can go back and check them. And if you're um, anything like me and it takes you three years or more to actually start doing a thing, <laughs> if yeah. there's a thing that you've been interested in and you've kind of found like you haven't had the time to really dig in, I'm not just saying that if you buy a book, then you're automatically going to find the time. But I think it, it again, nudges you in the right way, right? Yeah. Um, gives you a really good baseline, if you will. And that's when you mention it's interesting, you know, some of the principles maybe is a way to describe it. Um, that we garden by come from a lot of this material that we've, you know, reviewed over the years. Yeah. Um, and just like with anything, you, you learn a way and then you make adjustments based on your own personal experience in your garden. So um, I think a great example is like, you know, if you're interested, if you have a small space and you're interested in vertical gardening, well, I think I have a book to add to this list about what vertical bucket? gardening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you want I mean, me to add it on Amazon? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and I think that's a good example of it's just not a general book about gardening, but recommendations around. OK, yeah, this is a particular style of gardening that we need to consider. Um, well, that and that's something that we have done a piss poor job covering on the show, which is funny because if you look at my garden, it's an erector set. Everything goes up. So I don't know why. I think it's just kind of like I didn't it doesn't compete, you know, um, compute. Compute, thank you. Mm -hmm. Compete is not the correct term. <laughs> but um, no, I think that's a great idea to put something like that on that. And um, like the Square Foot Gardening book mm -hmm. by Mel Bartholomew. <laughs> and that's a great example of um, I'm not a 100 percent square foot gardener, but I absolutely take for some of the principles that he's recommended that I've learned from the book. And I refer to it every year. Yeah. Um, oh, do so, you? yeah, I do. I look back on it, not, you know, from cover to cover, but I look back on it like, wait a minute, how many peas in a square foot, you know, Yeah. Um, to help guide me. And sometimes you need that, you know, um, is it affirmation? No, you need some confirmation from someone else. Like, OK, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah. Yep. I look back on that as well. I um, I was trying to figure out a slick comeback to our piss poor job with vertical gardening, but all I yeah. can come up with is, yeah, man, like, <laughs> it's on the list for 2022. I think, well, I think it's vertical just gardening those... and container gardening is another piece, another um, subject matter that I, I think we've talked about spending some more time on in the coming year. Yeah, I mean, we definitely are because um, we, I don't know, I feel like for me personally like when everybody looks at my garden like well, what are you growing all your trellises well it's all things that naturally climb mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there's so much more that you can have climb mm -hmm. that it just doesn't make sense to do it otherwise you know so <clears throat> i think that you know having a book like that having a book about square foot gardening really mm -hmm. having a, a mini library yeah for all of these different techniques that you either are interested in because i mean you can find the information on the internet mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. sure but Having, like, let's let's hone in on the square foot gardening for a second. Having that information written by the guy who created it mm -hmm. is going to be very useful versus the people who have kind of interpreted it, interpreted it, interpreted yeah. it. You yeah. know, at least get that your your first hand knowledge from where it came from, and then you can kind of dwindle down from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, I am ashamed to say that I have not read that book, but I do use. Some of the methods, you know, I think everybody knows that I have tried it, but mm -hmm. that's a different show. We, we'll go into that another day. I'm <laughs> going to leave my tinfoil hat off today. Yeah, but it's a good example of um, having the real source material, yeah. right, is important to your success or failure in a particular method, especially if you're trying something new. I was just thinking about like how we don't we you don't wake up in your first garden and, and figure out this is the type of gardener you are. Right. It, you develop that 
over time, right? You try yeah. different methods, different ways, and then you figure what's most comfortable for you, which you found success in. And that's the reason why I do encourage things like, okay, I mean, if it's been working for you for 20 years and you're satisfied with it, keep on rocking and rolling with it. Yeah, you know, but if you it. are in search of something, you know, a great place to start is um, a good garden book. And there are a number of them out there. Yeah. What about a good gardening videotape? Like from way uh, back in the day, I bet those were classic viewing. Yeah, I'm hoping that they're all <laughs> online. <laughs> There's some yeah. things, some subjects. If the material is too old, I kind of look for a, a newer, um, um, uh, some newer exposure to it. It's kind of like, oh, we figured out different ways and better ways to do that thing since you had a 1972. You know, <laughs> I, you say that, but at the same time, like a lot of the stuff, especially when it comes into this area, it's all still very roughly the same thing. I mean, there's mm-hmm. definitely different things added to it, but a pea grows the same now mm-hmm. that it did 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you know? So it's, it's, it's very simple. So I guess the thing is, is I don't, I hate, I agree with what you're saying for a lot of things in life, mm-hmm. but for gardening, I don't necessarily believe that because I, w- I don't want people to be like, well, I don't want to get that book because it's old mm-hmm. because some of that old knowledge is very good because a lot of it is rooted in gardening wherewithal and patience stuff like that i'll go with that for the vegetables themselves but some of the methods remember we were um looking at a documentary last year and it was around um i forget the term um we did a whole episode on it in 2020 um uh, that was a hundred and some episodes ago yeah no but anywho it's and there's a whole facebook group around it um but they came in and, and edited the, the the footage to acknowledge. Okay, so you know you don't normally spray your your vegetables with this anymore, right? Like that, basically things that have been debunked or you know a, a better way has come across. They felt the need to come in and edit that content, which I think makes sense. So that's more so maybe the methods um, are a little bit different in some cases. Um, I mean, you're not going to have uh, some videotape or some book from 40 years ago, not many at least, talking about vertical gardening. So, anywho, um, I do want to, I don't want to lose too much time here. I do want to move on to someone that's expressed, because there are a lot of people you see it. If, you, if you're in the same groups or like the same people online, and like I can watch what you comment on, if you weren't already an avid canner, I you better believe that there is a comment that you've left saying, Oh, I want to start canning my food. I want to start preserving my food. So if there are people like that in your life, a really good, um, not necessarily like full on commitment is, and this is from our water bath people, twenty twenty five dollars as a gift. You can buy, um, the large canner, which could be used for other purposes. But I think that's like an entryway gift idea when it comes to a water bath canner, not a pressure canner, a water bath canner, not a pressure canner. And I didn't suggest pressure canners because they are a bit more expensive. But that's a good gift. If if your your budget is a couple hundred dollars for a person. Yeah, my canner was only like one hundred and twenty bucks. You bought that in like the early 1900s, though. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i guess inflation hadn't kicked in at that point yeah yeah so um, 120 yeah. is a couple hundred dollars in my mind so still in line so i was gonna stay in line with books but i was gonna go to canning as well mm-hmm. and the ball canning books are really good mm-hmm. um you know again those are on the canning section of the amazon list but those are really good because they have really easy to follow recipes I mean, hell, they make the jars, so you know they know what mm-hmm. they're talking about. There's mm-hmm. no need to fact check them, anything like that. And again, there's something about having that book there, for one, to keep me from constantly scrolling and finding new and new, more and more recipes. Like, this, it's right there. It's in my face. I can flip to it, and I'm good. Like, it's very stressful for me to be like, oh, I want to do something with my carrots and find 35 different recipes and then trying to figure out whereas I can go to the index there's 10 recipes and I can dwindle it down from there so um, and they have directions in them and all kinds of stuff so I agree with that too I think anything that can help somebody get into canning or preserving their food Mm -hmm. I think is top notch and we 
take for granted, I think, the distraction that the Internet is. Right. So you go there for a carrot, the collective we, <laughs> you go there for a carrot recipe and you're like, you know, top 40 things I should do before I turn 40. And you're like, what yeah. hold on, all right? Um, I'm like years late from looking at this list as well. But anyway, um, I think that it definitely slows you down a bit when it comes to like looking at a resource like a book. And I think that's important sometimes for the garden and, and what we're, and it's actually, you know, preparing you for patience, right? Right. It's not at your fingertips necessarily or at your phone tips or computer tips or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, that's <laughs> so important because as a gardener, you need to get used to that. You know, you mm-hmm, need to get mm-hmm. used to waiting. You need to get used, to, you know, to just taking it down, slow it down and then just enjoying that process, you know. Um, I have one of the ball canning books. I don't mm-hmm. have all of them. I would like to have the whole collection of them because then that would just give me like a solid library. Yeah. But there's other ones too. I have um, another book. It's the Homegrown Pantry, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so what that does, and if that's not there, it's by one of my favorite authors, um, a gardening author, her name is Barbara Pleasant. Mm-hmm. And what it does is it breaks down and says, hey, if you want to can your own food for to support your family, this is how much of this you're going to need to plant. This is how you're going to can it. And this is how you're going to use it. And it gives you like a real basic rundown of it. And it's pretty good. You know, it covers oh, a lot I of different. Oh, I love that. I mm-hmm. love that. What's the name of that that one again? Is it in the Amazon store? It should be. Yeah, it will okay. be. By the time okay. this airs, it will be. So, um, I guess but, I'll you know, wait then. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to wait. I don't want to give the wrong. I think it's the homegrown pantry. I'm not sure though. Yeah, so, I um, love that. That's actually been a, a thing that's piqued my interest. And, you know, specific to the garden, it's a struggle I've had over these last three seasons. And seasons, I mean like a full growing year. So, 19, 20, 20, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So, four years I've been struggling with the how much of a thing knowing that I was headed towards preserving. So um, that book is very timely. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things too, where it's like you said, people, you know, a lot of people say like, one of the things I would like to do is canned food. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same along the same lines as when people start the garden, they say, well, one of the things I would like to do is have a garden to support my family. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then this kind of helps break that down. So it's really eye opening, like how much it will take to support your family based on of, um, you know, how much you grow. So it doesn't do like how much for a total, let's just call it a farm Mm -hmm. just for lack of a better term, how big of a farm you need to support for your whole family, but how much of a certain crop you would need to, you know, so if you want to do all corn, it's Mm -hmm. you need to grow this much corn. Yep. So that's what I would, that's what I was hoping it was. Yeah. Um, There is something about, because you brought us back here, so I'll stay here a little while longer. There's something about those books regarding, regarding gardening, whether it's like looking at a plot of land And, you know, if they have a picture in there that says, you know, these are vegetables that are growing or looking at a um, food preserving book that really opens your eyes to the possibilities. And I know for some this is going to be like, well, yeah, but for many, including myself, it was like, wait a minute. Like, I know that there are a lot of things I can buy from the store that have been preserved. But when it comes to like what the home gardener is preserving, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. They're, you know, mixtures of things I would never have eaten that way. And again, a lot of them are condiments, but I mean, I enjoy some good condiments. So anywho, um, that's where the uh, ball canning book came in this mm -hmm. year for me because I had blueberries and I was going to make jam. So I made blueberry lemon jam. Mm-hmm. Would have never made that before. Mm-hmm. And that's what I made because it was in the book. So yeah. I made it and it's really good, good. So Yeah. But, um. You got any more? Because we got to go to the recipe here in a second. My last one is um, 
and it's an offshoot of what you described earlier, like the basket. If you don't go full basket with kind of your garden goodies inside, I think just your typical garden like tools. So maybe a shovel, maybe not so much, but like your hand trowel, like a couple of those as like, again, one, if it's someone that doesn't have a garden already, doesn't have those tools, it's great. Even if it's someone that already has them, you and I both know we always use two and sometimes three of those things. Um, so I love having and being able to set aside, okay, this is my new, you know, spade or something, you know, and I can come, I know that if I lose one or I can't find one, I have this new one sitting here. Um, so anywho, that's my last one. That's on the I Amazon got a hoe list for as Christmas well. Christmas last year, so, um, and I was I was thrilled. Yeah, thrilled to death. So my yeah. my last one, I don't have one. I have the one that has the sharp edge and then like the little pitchfork in the back. That's mm-hmm. I basically use that for both purposes. Um, and I just haven't stopped to buy another hoe. Yeah. If anyone wants to buy me a hoe for Christmas, I mean, come on. I just, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely inappropriate. Note, I apologize. <laughs> on that note, we're going to uh, the recipe of the day. <laughs> this week, I'm going to give you, in memory of the 40 butternut squash that I harvested last year, not this year, but last year off my plant, which, by the way, of the 40, I ate 39 of them. One of them did rot. So that's that. I'm going to give you a recipe. And we actually ate this for Christmas last year. So mm-hmm. it's very, very um, delish. Mm-hmm. So it basically, I think it goes along with yams almost, but we're going to take it and you're going to cube it and then you're going to roast it after it's cubed and you're going to toss them in butter. Um, cinnamon a little bit of salt and then you can sprinkle some kind of sugar on it if you want if you really want to but then you just roast them and at about 450 because remember my oven only goes to 450 or 425 (laughs) that's it in the story that's when i'm cooking and then when they start to brown you can pull them you can use a little bit of oil too you know if you if you don't want to use butter but the butter really helps give it that rich flavor because that's what you look for around you know the holidays and stuff Mm -hmm. and um as far as how much cinnamon i would use I would start at about a tablespoon of cinnamon and it just, you can adjust it to your flavor, Mm -hmm. but it's really good and you can get crazy and add a couple other, you know, you can get, add some herbs and stuff like that. We added a little bit of thyme to it last year as well. And it was a little bit confusing, but it was actually kind of good. So, you know, there's always that option, but super simple recipe, butter, cinnamon, 450 until the cubes are browned and then serve it up. Um, if you have a good butternut squash year, you have a good butternut squash year. So mm-hmm. I can appreciate having one more way to, to prepare that dish or that vegetable. It gets, I've, I'm honestly glad, uh, I didn't have any come to fruition this year and I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't mm-hmm. have any, but I just, I just couldn't eat anymore. I mean, 40 is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Or 39 I mean, even squash if- is a lot to eat in a year. 39 even if you I mean do you really want one every week you no know? I didn't mm-hmm. we were we were like oh here we go mm-hmm. you know so you're always trying to find new ways to cook it and yeah you know and there wasn't that many new ways but this way was really good anytime we can incorporate cinnamon we try so um another thing you can add to it too uh, and don't shoot me is a turmeric so turmeric mm-hmm. and cinnamon together can be a very good combination mm-hmm. okay light on the turmeric though <laughs> Be careful because that uh, turmeric stains too. I have white counters. So, um, yeah, be careful. Oh, does it stain? I have white counters too. Does it stain your counter? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you get it on the counter. But the the key there is uh, baking soda, peroxide, let it sit. Like you create a paste and then put it on that stain and then scrub it out. But I mean, if it's two or three weeks old, you may just have white and orange counters. You know? (laughs) Yeah. That's a shame. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of the things that we talked about are going to be in the list below all the books, um, the lights, stuff like that. And honestly, the one thing I wasn't say, if you had somebody that just really wanted to drop a dime, I would building a whole grow light setup mm-hmm. for you and your house would be an awesome thing too. Um, or that's something you can do with your gift cards or something that you mm-hmm. get for Christmas and all of the tools 
that you need to build what I use myself is in that list. Um, Batavia didn't have a whole, she's got some odd kind of setup, I would say. <laughs> I mean, okay. some kind of, there was something with your shelves, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember I'll, when we were talking I'll, about I'll it. I'll send you what I have and we'll determine if it's an, a, a like enough to leave what you already have out there or yeah. if we should add it. So, and then, cause you use a different kind of light than I do too. Mm-hmm. I so, do. um, we can add that as well, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, I think that would be something that would be really useful for people. And it, I mean, a lot of times if you're going to do something like that and build like an actual setup, it can be costly at first, but then that will kind of, you know, it'll last for years and years. Mm-hmm. So helping offset that cost will really be helpful. I yeah, think. absolutely. Especially if someone is establishing or expanding, because yeah. all of these costs add up. And if you can put a dent, as William my mom would say, just put a dent in it. Yeah. You know, um, that's truly helpful. And I think that many gardeners would appreciate that. And it's also a way to continue to contribute to their garden. Yeah. Right. And it's year also a way for you to get more produce out of their garden. Yeah. <laughs> It's a man with a plan. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my mom asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I told her I wanted um, Lowe's gift cards so I can get wood to build my beds. Mm-hmm. You know, she's like, really? That's what you want? I'm like, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I was pricing out the wood for it. Goodness gracious. I'm going to ask my uncle if he would um, build out or insert or whatever you say it, a new um, light socket electrical socket mm-hmm. there's a space in my basement that i want to set up my lights but i don't have um electric plug there oh, okay. i'm gonna so ask you if he do that in. for me for christmas there you go uh-huh. and that's a good him, thing too it takes him three years to do things too so <laughs> he's still painting the interior of my house from 2017 but there you, you go know. <laughs> it's a christmas gift that gives for many years yeah absolutely all right, everybody. So check out the links below. Um, if you be, decide you want to become a patron and be part of this, please help us keep the show going. Um, it allows us to focus more time in creating topics for you and carrying on these conversations. Um, if you want to do a one-time donation, there's a link down there for that. And again, the Amazon list is down there. Follow us, Backyard Gardens TV, anywhere that you are. And, um, you know, have a good holiday season. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk to you guys again. Maybe. maybe you know. Oh, yeah, maybe, we'll talk to them not. again. No, we'll talk to you again. <laughs> no, so, we wanted um, to get this out to you all uh, to give you some time to make your buying decisions for your gardeners. and to the make, season. Look, to make your list. There, I'm, I'm hoping that there's some folks that are listening here that can make their Christmas list based on some of the things we've shared. Yeah, because I always get asked, what do you want for Christmas? And I always go, duh, I don't know. <laughs> so there you go. Now you know. Yeah. And on that note, See ya. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you want to see what we're up to or just stay up to date on all the announcements regarding the show or anything gardening, then you can follow us on Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. We love seeing what you guys are doing. So use hashtag BYG podcast in your posts and we'll be sharing your gardens with the Backyard Gardens community. And check us out on YouTube at Backyard Gardens where we will post this show, all of our other shows, clips, and then also some gardening tips and just gardening entertainment. And you can see us at our website at BackyardGardensTV.com. But that's it for today's show. So help us as we learn to grow and grow from change. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. We'll call this one a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.